Welcome to Inside the Wave podcast, episode two. And today I have my jiu-jitsu coach, my mentor, John Freeland joining us. Welcome, John. Happy to be here to the podcast. You're as much my coach as I am yours. I appreciate that. So tell me a little bit about you. You've been doing jiu-jitsu for a, a minute or two. You have an academy or two. Uh, let us know a little bit about you. Uh, well, I started jiu-jitsu in the late 90s, right? So uh, like most people at that time, inspired by the Hoist Gracie performances in the first UFCs. And, and you that, didn't really like start in the 80s because it didn't even like exist. Right. In the U.S. yet. But what's, you're right. Uh, what was neat about those martial arts did. So like that was like the, the Chuck Norris era mm-hmm. and all that. And, and then like the, the, the fantasy other Asian arts like Kung Fu, like these mystic things like Kung Fu. And then of course Taekwondo. And I was in Taekwondo and all that, like everybody else at the time. And that's what made us look at the UFC when it came out a little differently than regular people, I think, because we always theoretically thought, oh, Kung Fu is better than sumo, better than karate, better than jujitsu. Yeah. We've heard of jujitsu, of course, but to see it put to the test opened our eyes a little differently than, I guess, the lay person that watched the first few UFCs. So I think we had that slight little advantage or, or at least different way of looking at it, and it hooked everybody. Everybody that you know has been doing jujitsu from that era, that was that was the hook. So did you discover jujitsu? For one, Taekwondo. What rank were you? You know what's ridiculous? <laughs> Anybody that's been in the military will get them think, think this is absolutely hilarious. I had just tested for my black belt right before I quit my Pizza Hut job to join the military. I received my black belt in the mail while in basic training in Georgia, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but there, you've given up all your rights. They read your mail in front of everybody. They open okay. your packages. They take your food, all your care packages, all the stuff. So you were only like it. high fives. It was not. It was like, oh, what is this, Friedland? What is this? I'm like, oh no. So then I'm the bait of everyone's joke because I still can't fight. Yeah. And then, uh, and so that that was. Uh, I mean, anybody that's in the military, if you could just imagine that your drill sergeant pulled out a, a black felt of like the skinniest guy in the platoon. Pulls in front of everybody. I mean, as as horrifying as it was at the time, I'm glad it happened. Awesome. And is that before or after you found jiu-jitsu? It was before. Okay. Uh, I So, you know, I joined the military in, the, in 94, 93 technically, but it was, the UFC was, I think, 93 or 92 or something. It was early 90s. We saw it, and it was just like, jiu-jitsu, okay, jiu-jitsu, man, this little guy. Dragging the energy out of everybody and tying them up and mysteriously making them quit with this tapping out action. Yeah. You know, and it was, it just planted the seed where it was like, okay, jujitsu seems to be the one that just, no matter we got, no matter what, if they came in striking, swinging, or even grappling, it always came up ahead. So me getting beat up in the military later, I flashed back. And I'm like, what can I possibly do? This is stupid. These guys are all bigger, just like you would expect. They all did some wrestling or, or they did better karate or whatever. Yeah. And I just remember flashing back to this, that Royce Gracie guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, and, and so then she was shortly after I got in and, and, and stationed in Germany, me and my buddy who had a similar story, just started privately training under the tutelage of Hoist and Hori and Gracie with a VHS tape in our barracks. When everyone else was out doing their Friday night shenanigans, yeah. we were there hiding. Just practicing. Yeah, and it gets here. And that was, you know, like all the martial arts can be empowering, yeah. right? But nothing was more empowering to me and probably ever since than always being on the bottom, always being the victim of bully, always losing every challenge I ever made and definitely every one I ever accepted, just suddenly and almost overnight, realistically a few months, but it felt like overnight, we just stopped losing. No, we didn't win all of our fights. We stopped losing. And like, when you're no longer afraid your capital is going to be taken, you're more likely to move on theirs. And it just, it was so, it was so, and I just, that's, I think that's one of the first and quickest gifts you get in jujitsu or any, you know, realistic applied fighting art yeah. is um, the, 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 how quickly you go from the 99% to the 1%. 
And I think sometimes like you don't have to always win. Sometimes like surviving is thriving, right? Like, like our kids get bullied in school. You don't have to beat up the bully, but if you show the bully that what they're doing to you is not effective, that is a victory. That's sometimes a larger victory. And a service to every other kid too. hundred percent. And so, you know, self-defense is sure you're defending yourself, but you're also defending everyone else. Yeah. Because you're willing to put yourself in a situation where I'm going to show you that your bullying isn't working. Mm-hmm. And then you just saved everybody else too. So you found jujitsu in the military, training in like the super classic Gracie, like garage gym kind of, oh. where you're just like all self-discovery, all self-learning, no real instructor besides Mr. V Sensei VHS. Yeah. If you guys know what VHS is, it's before DVDs, which is before Netflix. What does VHS stand for? I couldn't even. Because I remember it was VHS and beta were the two competing uh, things, I think. What, what is it? I don't know. <laughs> but but uh, it was, yeah, they're big and ug- ugly. And in the first video tapes, yeah. back when we were training, too, people were trying to record us. Not enough, unfortunately, but they would stick those big VHS tapes in a bigger thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was nuts. So they had smaller tapes, and so, you know, evolved that way. Now the phones are super, super yeah. guys, but so, so sorry. So then, so... You found jujitsu in the army. You kept practicing jujitsu. You did your services, your tours, mm-hmm. and you eventually came back to Wisconsin, right? Yes. Okay. What? When was that? So that was cool. So I got I got back. Um, uh, oh my god! At the end of ninety six, early ninety seven, jumped right into university. I wanted to get a quick transition uh, back to Green Bay, where I was, and I was just raving. I told everyone I could tell my fam. Nope. When you start jujitsu, you want to tell everybody, and no one wants to hear it. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's it's like CrossFit. There's some advice for a new person. It's saying exactly it's CrossFit. We're really kind of anything, yeah. but jujitsu is so abstract. Oh yeah, nobody wants to hear it, especially if they see it. They're like, "What are those two guys doing?" It's so, it's so, yeah. So, but I was one of those. I was that guy. I went to that. I went to that that phase. I'm like telling everybody, and they're like, "Yeah," and you know, he heard this new Nintendo game, you know, or yeah. heard about the Green Bay Packers. And uh, so, but the, one of my friends was paying attention and he said, he said, you know, I, I just saw, I heard a radio announcement about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It's as far away as Appleton, 30 minutes now. Who wouldn't travel? Yeah, yeah. Hours now. But um, I'm like, it's, it's not the Jiu-Jitsu I'm talking about. This is just what we were talking about before we knew what Jiu-Jitsu Yeah, was. yeah, yeah. And um, he's like, I'll go down there with you or whatever. And last, he, he couldn't do it at the last minute or whatever. So I drove down by myself. And I went in there. I'm like, I'm just going to. From Green Bay to Appleton. Yeah, which is nothing. And that's what, yeah. And I went in there and I saw a bunch of people in geese. Yeah. Doing exactly what I thought jujitsu was. The new jujitsu that I saw. Hoist Gracie. Yeah. And, yeah. and it looked like the, the grainy, uh, you know, uh, you called it uh, the garage, garage jujitsu yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Real grainy. Just, yeah, just big Midwestern guys roll around. Though. I was like, and the guy's like, oh, how you doing? I'm still little. Yeah. And. I'm like, I, I, w- I want to sign up for this. Like, just try a free class first. I'm like, no, I want, what's the maximum I can do right now? We could do six months or whatever. And I'm, I'll pay it full right now. Yeah. He's like, you know, most people that do this don't make it a, a week or two. I'm like, no, no. I think I'm all hard. fact. Well, it's still a fact, right? And I think it's, and I think as a side note, I think that's on us too as the leaders to try to soften that blow. 100%. Right. Like to just widen that funnel of, like, give them a little bit of a treat. And even in your early days too, it wasn't the most accepting environment, right? No. And, but I mean, and in, in, not to get off track too much, but like, people don't have to come in hard. Yeah. You can build resilience, you know, and we can, and we can, knowing that. But so back then it was like, uh, you're right. People don't make it a week or two. Yeah. Which we've actually, and I've seen you evolve your curriculum and your gym. Like you, you've removed some things from the warm ups that were like super intimidating for newer people. Hard, but you change stuff up. Yeah. To adapt, right? Because our goal, like, we still want to create hard individuals, like people that can defend themselves. Yeah. But we want to create a lot of them, not a few of them. And if you kind of, like, phase everyone out, filter everyone out right away, right. they don't get a fair shot at finding out if it's for them or not. Yeah, that's right. And, and if steel truly is hard as steel or iron sharp as iron, we need more of it. Yeah. And, and we bounce off each other. It's like, a, I always use the analogy of, like, a, like doing laundry or, or... I hate doing laundry. What about it? Imagine that, imagine that person that loves doing laundry. I know some people, they, they actually, I should take it back because people do it as like meditation, yeah. just, like, just like dishes. But 
laundry is, is one thing, but or, or like a rock and a tumbler. Mm. Do you remember what tumblers are? Are tumblers a thing? We yeah. put it in, it makes it smooth. Shiny? Yeah. Yeah. That thing will get smooth faster with more rocks. Yeah. The piece of clothing you try to get cleaner will be cleaner with other clothing mm. bumping up against it. Yeah. You know, people just wash it by itself. Careful, it won't get as clean. But what? It, now, also, if there's too many rocks, nothing gets polished. Yeah. You know, when you fight for mass space, every yeah. day, nobody can move. You have to take turns and da da. And the same in the wash, too. Yeah. So you're welcome for the laundry tip. But I mean, that's, I think that's a, you would have that perfect balance of, of contact and space. Yeah. Right. So you did, you signed up for six months in Appleton. How many other like gyms were in the area in Wisconsin? Like night, we're, we're like 96, 97. If there was any gyms at all, and this, we have to look back at the history. It may, there may have been one. It would have been Justin Morris probably, or maybe a Madison thing. Yeah. Way back then. Everywhere else that we were training was either like where I was even where I was, it was just a side project in a karate. Yeah. I was going to say, or it's not, it's not a jujitsu school yeah. yet. It's like, Hey, we, yeah. we're a karate school and we saw jujitsu diamond in the UFC. So we're going to practice yeah. some pajama. Right? That, that was all of it. Yep. Okay. And so, or people's basements, we went all the way up to, uh, and that was the thing was on Friday nights it was kind of like a tradition. We'd go up way up into Door County of all places. We'd go down to Milwaukee, of course. Yeah. Madison, uh, Beaver Dam, Appleton. And then I started venturing to Chicago and then Atlanta and LA and New York. And I just tried to get that. That was like the days of like, you went on like exploratory missions and brought it back. Yeah. But everybody was. So we were mixing it up. Like that's how like the, the melting pot started, at least for us in Wisconsin. Yeah. You know, and that's crazy because you in 97, you had to go travel to find a jujitsu school. Even when I started in 2007, 10 years later, if I wanted to train with like a handful of color belts, like more than oh. more than one, you'd still have to travel for it. Yeah, because it comes in phases, right? So to find anybody at all that wanted to train jujitsu, yeah, you had to you had to travel an hour or or more half the time. And I remember one of the one of the big concerns was like, how do I cover my rug burn? <laughs> Not mat burn, yeah, but rug burn. I mean, half of us didn't have mats, half of us didn't have geese. Yeah, we certainly didn't have belts with tabs on them that we used to. And I, even in your early days, I believe my first belt was wrapped in yeah, elect, it was not duct tape, tape uh, hockey tape, hockey tape. That's it. We made our own tasks. We oh, we want a tab like them. Yeah, and I think the only way, and this is dating ourselves because e-commerce like wasn't that big. You couldn't right. like go online and order it. Like if you wanted a jujitsu gi with a jujitsu belt, you bought it from a tournament. We're like, oh yeah, what are vendors? We're like, Fuji was there as a vendor at a Naga tournament. That's right. Year. That's right. Otherwise, you're just getting a judo gi or a karate gi from yeah. um, from Norm over at Judo Inc. and you would ride it back to the gym on your scooter. F- f- the, you know those? They were just, I was just talking about this like a couple weeks ago. On my scooter with my army duffel bag, very symbolic today. Yeah. With my army duffel bag, and I remember hitting the gas. I had loaded up with all our gis we could possibly. Have. Hitting the gas, maybe do an involuntary wheelie halfway through yeah. the intersection, the green light, because it chipped me back. Yeah. I don't miss that. I mean, I do actually. I have nostalgic about it, but. So you were a part of jujitsu pretty much what, since it started, at least in the United States. And you've kind of seen its evolution. Um, and from my understanding, like, and, and with most athletics and cool things, right, they kind of start on the coast. They kind of move their way in. They'll get to Chicago yeah. kind of before they get to us. Uh, when did you start seeing jiu-jitsu actually start becoming a thing in Wisconsin? Like where you can go like, hey, there's a jiu-jitsu school now. There's a jiu-jitsu school. So like, man, was it Henry's? Was Henry's kind of the yeah, player? Yeah, so he, oh, so man, I'm trying to think where did the first play? Because we used to drive down and I, I could have the order messed up. Yeah. The order of the places, but like there was the Brickyard Gym. But before that, there was an old salon that I think is now a guitar store mm-hmm. on Kinnikinnick. And before that, it was in a, uh, oh, wait, um, at the corner of Lincoln and KK. It's now like a bake. No, no, it's, it's Voyager. It's a, yeah. it's a wine bar right now. I think. Yeah. Uh, and so that was, those. so I guess, I mean, that would have been, oh man, I don't, wanna, I don't screw up the dates, but I bet you, I'm just saying around 2000, I could be off by sure. two or three years, but the first person that showed me that having a, a, a jiu-jitsu school as, as like a profession, mm-hmm. whereas everyone else was, everybody you knew, if they did have a school or, or the beginnings of a school, also, oh, let's not forget about Adrian Serrano too, 
Oh, let me let me not. Uh, the old like G. legend. Old G. Yeah, like it's. I mean, like, uh he's he, he's been he's a, he's got to he, you should get him out here. Yeah. He's got an amazing story and a uh, million fights and super helpful to me. Like legitimately a million fights. Well, or over a hundred, I think. I, I know for a while documented. <laughs> yeah, I know for a while he was like the top five at least of number of MMA yeah. fights or whatever. Yeah, but um, it's just another one too. Uh, and then like uh, yeah, people. And then he then he was in the back, like kind of a side project or a side program, I should say, at Duke Rufus Gym or whatever. Then you start to kind of the juice starts to pop, get popular. And then they need their space, so then things kind of happen like that. And so, but. But back to Justin Morris, he he was the guy that like I heard that he quit his job. What are you going to do? Well, how are you yeah. going to keep the dojo? He's like the dojo is going to keep itself, kind of thing. He didn't say those words, but like he, I'm like, what's so your job is you just have a dojo? That, that was on hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't do that. And I just had that in the back of my mind, as I was in the jujitsu space. Yeah, right. Like karate and taekwondo, like they've had that down of yeah. you know how do you actually make it a career that they, and it's. And we can learn a couple things. A hundred percent. hundred percent. But yeah, the jiu-jitsu was just like, well, I'm going to get you. I'm yeah. going to fight you. I'm going to go back to my job. Yeah, we all have day jobs. Yeah. Right. And so like to make it your, your day job was a, it was really cool to watch him go through it. Because I remember him struggling to it and, and being open about it and, and having his jobs. And then, then just, he's still kicking butt, like rocking it. Yeah. And so that, that was, a, and then, you know, things started popping up and they fizzle out, pop up, fizzle out, like quantum jiu-jitsu for a while. Oh, yeah. But then, you know, then you got, and there's always something. I bet you new schools open it up every year now. All the time. And I welcome it. It's, it's such a, the more the better. New ones open, some split into two, some open up other locations, yeah. some close. Different angles. On, on, that's true art. But it's definitely not been like, it's been fairly exponential growth. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't have a data scientist to analyze this, but it's not like linear by any means. Like, it's it's blown up in the last you know, 10 years to hear it overheard in conversation by people yeah. that don't even practice it. hundred percent is it. Yeah, I would have never seen that come. hundred percent. And it, 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 back in the day, just to even hear someone know what jujitsu was, was uncommon. Now it's like, well, I'm going to jujitsu you. That was never a thing. Yeah. So I thought that, I think that's pretty cool. So what made you want to go from athlete to coach and from coach to gym owner? Athlete to coach to coach. Because like you were just doing jujitsu for a while, and yeah. then I know that you were coaching at other people's places, mm-hmm. right? I know you were coaching at Rufus Sport for a while, yep. um, helping out at other academies. Yeah. You kind of had your own little thing going on, but then you're like, there was a moment in time where like I'm going to open up my own place. Yeah. So the 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 first part of just I just I was young. I, I loved the empowering feeling, like like I mentioned, of, of just I won't be a victim. And no one around me will. And I'm going to set the example. So it was just a powerful, like, thing. I wanted more of it. And I, and I it, and then, you know, once you get past that 1% we we're kind of talking about, it's like, I want to beat the other guys that can do jujitsu too. Like, and then, and it just, I fell in love with the, first, I fell in love with the martial part of the martial art. Yeah. But the second and the most important part is falling in love with the art of it. And I, I, once I got obsessed with all the intricacies of it, all the, variations of it it all, never stops it never stops and that sounds intimidating if you're still in the martial phase yeah but exhilarating if you're in the artist phase yeah and, and i love that concept because i tell people all the time when i'm talking to new students like it's like drinking from a fire hose <laughs> but you eventually learn to love drinking from the fire hose yeah or or how to just take it into doses yeah. You don't yeah. push your whole mouth over Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Because like, yeah. I'll still go to a seminar that's two hours long with someone, and I'll be like, straight over my head because there's yeah. so much information. And I've been doing jujitsu for I don't even know how long now, but like seventeen years. It's funny. The longer you do, the less you. you know, but like, man, I, I still feel like that's. But I love it now. It's it's less intimidating. It's more like every time that happens to me, I'm like, there's still so much for me to learn. I love it. I think that's uh, that's it. Goes from intimidation to exhilaration. And you'll never, you'll never, once you click over to that, once you flip into that, you, you're a true artist. You're like, just because you're a, a great potter doesn't mean you won't appreciate another painting gallery yeah. or music, musical performance. Like art is art and uh, there's no two that are the same. And even if you're using the exact same colors, what are you going to do with those colors? And we talk about this all the time too. There's some undeniable facts in the universe, uh, in art, red and blue, 
make purple. <laughs> make purple. That's on the top. You can't fight that, right? You can't get yeah. any more lev- You can't get any more torque on anything than ninety degrees. These are just yeah. There's certain unalienable rights or not rights. Well, can like that. laws. Laws. We teach those early, right? Mm-hmm. And that's those are undeniable. But what you do with those? That's the parry of jujitsu. Yeah, that's the John of jujitsu, and that's every single teammate we have. You make it your own. Yes. So if you're still in that, I don't understand the the basics phase. Well, then there's just too much to learn. Why would I do this? This is dumb. Yeah. But if you just show, look, there's only a few principles, just a few things. There's only certain ways you can mix colors. Mm-hmm. Once you get past that, then they're like, wait, I can do this? Yeah. And we always say too, like, you know, when you're a new person, the answers are, 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 are great. You're looking for the answer. You're looking for the keys. You're looking for the, the answer, the, the plug and play. You know you're getting better at jujitsu when the answer is, well, it depends. Yeah. That's real life, which is like almost always the answer in jujitsu. It is. The answer is like almost always it depends. Yeah, right. And there's always multiple right answers. And as I'm the new guy, I won't hear that though. Yeah. You, you, you want the answer. Tell me what the answer is. Yeah. How do you escape mount? They really do expect, and I don't blame them. Yeah. How do I get out of a mount position? Okay. We, we use a couple tools. And I think that's great for a new person because it gives them a singular target to aim for. Just like checkers is good. Yeah. Yeah. You have certain things that just... It's, it's easy. Black and white, good and evil, Superman, yeah. Lex Luthor. Yeah. Real life is like jujitsu. Everything depends. And then you add in like chess, and then it's another layer. And then you do the, whatever chess is on Star Trek, that 3D. Oh, thing. yeah. You know, I tried to make one of those boards, a homemade board. <laughs> <laughs> Can we swear out here? Yeah, I have. Uh, yeah, I, it, it, you can swear. I just didn't mark it as explicit. Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, should be fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was... And then, but just like real life too, like when you're a little kid, mm-hmm. there's good and evil. Yeah. There's black and white, literally other pieces. Uh, even in, in politics, there's there's red and there's blue and there's, like I said, Superman, Lex Luthor. Like, real life isn't like this. It's yeah. more Eastern, like the yeah, yeah man, you know, like yeah, like there's all the in between, and that's where all the magic. And that's where you have to be. You have to jujitsu your way through. That's what I think one of the greatest benefits of jujitsu, all off the mats, is your ability to look at it more realistically. Than idealistically, yeah. Like, what what really is happening here? You know, like just because there's a hand in my collar doesn't mean I'm in trouble. Hundred percent. You know, like it's it's just there. It's a fact. Yeah. Right? It's not a threat. Yeah. It's not an opportunity. It's just like you can view it how you want to view it. Yeah. Like the classic, uh, no one to hold them, no one to fold them, no one to run. But based based on your deck, no one to run, no one to run. We don't run. Children and thieves run. <laughs> no, but that's uh. I think that's one of the big things too, is just like that ability to zoom out and be like, oh, maybe what seemed right at the moment is, is wrong from, from the strategic picture and vice versa. Like, I think I got all the idea. We'll get down in the weeds, take a look. That, that zoom in, zoom out. I think that's a, a powerful life lesson. And I learned that in jujitsu. Yeah. Except luckily, maybe I would have learned it anyway, doing underwater basket weaving. Yeah. But I started jujitsu young enough that I think jujitsu was the way. You get to see like the micro picture and the macro. Yeah. And I think it's a life skill everywhere. Every time, every time someone cuts you off in traffic, the classic examples, right? You know, do you think maybe there's more to yeah. the situation? What, what you, one analogy I heard from one of my mentors about that is like, you know, I see things from my perspective, but then I need to be able to see things from your perspective. But then there's this zoomed out global perspective. Oh, yeah. Like, hey, I'm not in my shoes. I'm not in your shoes, but I'm in the camera shoes right now, looking at everything that's going on, the worldly perspective. Bird's eye view. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and jujitsu really gets you looking at. Well, and even in a literal interpretation of that, is me and you are rolling, and you ask me a question. Well, wait, it depends. Am I you or are you me? Yeah. Or I'm watching you roll with somebody else. How do I advise you as I stand out? Like you said, I'm like the bird's eye view. It's nice to have a bird's you eye view. You see everything going on. Like it is. It's like it's nice to have a, a mentor yeah. or a therapist or some that looks over. Look, take away all your little feelings you got from your inside. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And just, what's, how does this look from the outside? Just like completely detached. Yeah. And how would I be if I was acting this way? 100%. Yeah. And I, I like, Put yourself in the other shoes. Yeah. And that takes wisdom gained through applied living. And yeah. it's just who is just sped up lives over and over again. Cool. And so we talked a lot about jujitsu. I don't also don't want to neglect that you had a pretty successful and long MMA career too. Oh, yeah. How many fights over 30? 32. 32 30. fights. Mm-hmm. Um, all over as well. Russia, fights in Russia. You never ended up fighting in Japan, did you? No, I did. I had uh, I did two combat wrestling 
things. One of them, I guess, Romino Sato. Okay. Uh, that was in 99 or 97. So what made you want to get into MMA and why? MMA, I never wanted to get into MMA. Okay. Uh, 30 <laughs> fights later. 32 fights. What, what, so one of the beautiful things about starting jiu-jitsu at the cusp of it when it started was that we, we were doing it before it was cool, you know? And you could kind of just do MMA, but just do your jiu-jitsu and still win. That's, yes. And that, well, where MMA was still different martial arts against martial arts. It wasn't like well-rounded. Yeah. Everyone was just tough and they could fight. Yeah. But jiu-jitsu, even, even wrestlers would just, they, they could only wrestle so their, their wrestling wasn't as effective yeah. early on. Yeah. When they learned how to... When they throw in a little bit of jiu-jitsu, then it gets really effective. Yeah, well, they they brought it. They brought us the ground and pound and lay and pray and all that. Like, but I, I mean, each of them had their influences, right? But yeah, what's the biggest lesson you learned from them? Then they, maybe life, maybe jiu-jitsu. Biggest lesson from MMA? Yeah. Like, oh. what's your takeaway that you could give me from MMA so I don't have to do it myself? Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, MMA is just another, uh, I think MMA is just like jiu-jitsu, it's just like other things, like it, you get out of it what you put into it. There's some guys that got out of MMA thinking, well, if I could have just, ooh, that guy, I wish I could have. But it, it taught me, like, you know, life is a team sport. But you are fully responsible for what you put into it and out of it. And when you're in that cage, it closes behind you and you are by yourself, even though you're part of a big team. Yeah, and you have a corner van, but and one without the other is impossible. You can't do what you're about to do, win or lose, in that cage without the support and backing of the team that's part of your tribe, right? Yeah. And the tribe fails without the individual efforts of each one within it. Mm. And MMA brings that to light. Uh, that, one of my favorite. Uh, memories of MMA it was actually one of my most embarrassing, humiliating, quickest losses. All of them. Actually, you were there. I was to say, was I cornering you? I hope not. <laughs> it wasn't your fault, Jess, because again, it was on me. I, I just, it was one of those, uh, I, don't, I don't believe in luck, but uh, I got I got just cleaned right in the first first seconds of the first round. Yeah. Probably 22 seconds. All it takes is one good punch, and sometimes people don't realize that. Yeah. What do they call the strikers, strikers dice roll or yeah. whatever? But uh, I remember my you mentioned Star Trek. My lights going in and out, in and out as I was going. I had a, I remember like his leg against my face as I'm trying to take him down. But he's sprawling and hammering and hammering and hammering. And then I end up, the lights go up for good. Is that when you got punched going, like you got punched and you'd come fall, you got knocked out on your way to a double leg and then woke back up. Yes. Lightning. Yes. Over and over. I definitely remember that fight. And tried to tackle the referee when I came to. Yep. Yeah. Uh, who was Al Wickers? Oh, Al Wickers. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, Le- legend, 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 legend yeah. referee. He's probably ref more matches than anybody on earth here. But um, but so I I'm blacking out. I'll, I'm actually out. Then when I wake up and, and they're like, "What's going on?" And I remember Pucci said, "What do we do? What do we do?" And I'm like, "Get me to my feet. I don't know or whatever." Yeah. And then we, we you know we got it was for the belt, so we made sure the guy won the belt over me. And then I was so uh. uh so just humiliated and yeah, that's on me, right? Humiliation is a choice. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't deal with the emotional, whatever. And I remember going back to the locker room, and you could just hear the crowd and just like, and I, I, but I, and here's the thing: this is this is back to the whole. It takes a team. Even though I fought with myself, I'm sitting there and I'm crying. I'm sitting on, on a chair, and I got tears running down my face. My 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 gloved hands are over my face. I'm like, what are you? What the what the hell did you just you know just really beating myself up? Yeah. And one of you guys are tapping me on the head, saying, "Hey, oh, the doc, the ring doctor wants to see you. Make sure you're okay, or whatever." And I just, I'm like, I'm like, what? I look up, and you guys have a freaking cocoon built around me. Yeah, it was just, like we didn't rehearse this. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, let him in. He opens up like a like a cocoon action, like this. Yeah, and it lets him in. You guys close around him. Yeah, it's like you guys are protecting me from whatever, mm-hmm. and nobody's getting to me. Without my, yeah. it was really, really, and then it was again that Duke Rufus himself, the promoter of the thing, comes in like, "Hey, you okay?" I'm like, oh, "I'm so sorry." He's like, "You did great, man. You, this happens any, any given Sunday." So he's real support. And then, but the, you guys opened up and closed around me like this. this we never had a contingency for we lost, no. right? So that's on us. But to to watch the way you guys came together, it was one of my favorite 
proudest mm -hmm. moments, uh, well, in my life, but in MMA and certainly jiu-jitsu and the whole journey, was because like I'm part of that. If I saw that from the bird's eye view, watch how they cocooned over that guy. Yeah. That guy happens to be John or whatever. Like and they just true team and family. Yeah. You guys didn't have a plan. You guys didn't know what to do, but you knew protect him. Yeah. And he's one of us. And he would do the same for us. I just, I, and that really like, it gives me chills thinking about it right now. For sure. And so if you're talking about, I, I could have had just that one fight, not done 31 others. Yeah. But I, I, I really took that as a really, it made me feel like my purpose in jujitsu is, is proper. And like, cause it's, it is bigger than a fight. Yeah. So now at this point in time in your career, you have all those fights under your belt. You have a lot of years of training, a lot of traveling jujitsu. Oh yeah. Um, you have two academies. You have your kids in jujitsu now. Yeah. Uh, for the parents out there, what's like your, what's your biggest tip coming from a person that's been doing jujitsu for so long and owns academies? What's your biggest tip for parents around getting their kids involved in jujitsu? Especially if you like really want them to do it. Mm. This is a sore subject for me because it's a hard one. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I'm going to nail this answer though. Cause I screwed up with the first and succeeded with the second. Not to, I screwed up initially. I look, yeah. I say I learned from the mistake of the first. Yeah. But, um, it's just play. It's just another game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to, um, I, you know, it's, it's all stuff that we all should know better, but just, it's like baseball or football. This is just jujitsu. You get to wear karate pants. Yeah. You know, a karate outfit. It just play, play, play. It's fun. And, and yeah, there's no reason unless somebody's in danger. Yeah. Like the, we have our kind of a four tennis with our kids program. Like number one, keep it safe. If all, if everything is gone haywire, just keep, you're there to protect the number one, right? Always number one, right? Uh, and then number two, before character development, before um, technical prowess is uh, keep them having fun. Because if they don't have fun, they're never going to be able to work on their character or the, mm. that's why I stay with it. They're going to want to play right away. So in, in that order, you know, you go in there thinking, I'm going to teach you how to, you know, do an arm bar or pass the guard or take somebody down. But what's more important than that is, hey, who's being a turd? Like, this is how you, well, you line up, you, 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 Respect your your instructions and yeah. communicate and control your emotions and, and try to then hell, have fun. And let's be honest, there's no difference between that perspective that we should have for our kids and adults. It's true. Like adults, it needs to be safety and fun. Like if you join jujitsu and you want to learn how to beat other people, but it needs to be fun. Yeah. It's, it's, and, and then it's even, and losing can be fun, but you have to find a way to make it fun. It is. And it, it takes a lot of, uh, a uh, paradigm shift, right? Yeah. Because what, what does it mean to lose? It just means that person had their hand raised. I've seen people get greater victories out of their losses and some people lose worse with the wins. You know, like, and, and you know, the same way I've been more physically damaged by victories yeah. sometimes. Like, I've gone all with the, with the worst for wear. Yeah. And that's, that, that's a physical example of what could actually be a, a spiritual or emotional or, yeah. you know, you can, you can lose with a win and win with a lot. Yeah. So a lot of times those those one hit knockouts are the safest. Yeah, it's the one. Oh, that, good to go. It's the one that takes thirty <laughs> hits that really damages. Yeah. Well, that's that's why I'd rather be in a bare knuckle fight than an MMA fight, an MMA fight over a boxing fight. Yeah. I don't want to get in a pillow fight where I get hundred hit two hundred pound two hundred times in the head. I'd rather get one clean one here that might open me, but I'm okay. So main message is just keep it fun, safe for. Oh yeah, so fun. fun. In that order. Yeah. It, those are, and then everything else comes based on that. Yeah. Cause then you start slipping with your, we, we, what's, what's neat about jujitsu as opposed to adults, but sometimes even with adults too, is sometimes you got to sneak the jujitsu in. Yeah. Right. And, I, and I've been telling a lot of my, my blue belts that lately, cause they get to blue belt, they're like, what now? And I'm like, find something fun to work on. Yeah. Find a position, find a concept, find a, a sequence that like you're not doing it to win jujitsu you're just doing it because you find it fun yeah let me just like you need to find fun again i think that's why a lot of times people get the blue belt blues yeah right it's because they put all that work in to get their blue belt and then they they keep putting that work in and they start getting burnt out it's like no you need to start having fun again that white to blue belt we just talked about this last night uh after class the white to blue belt and that and kind of talking about the blue and through yeah what you call the blue Blue blues, blue belt blues, blue belt blues. Yeah, for sure. And I think one causes the other. The blues cause the. What we have, there's such a. 
it's, it's still the majority stave, right? But when someone gets a blue and they're through, I think it's, you're like that seed under the soil and, and you're just getting watered and when you're a white belt and you're just getting watered, it's like, I just got to take in, that information is a little bit of water, that's some warm soil, that's some nutrients in the soil. But once you are blue belt, you sprout and you, you got leaves sticking out of you like this. There's a lot of pressure, literally pressure, air pressure and wind uh, in, in, in the form of, oh, you got a blue belt now? If I get a blue belt, that means I have to hammer you. Yeah. Or I'm a purple belt or brown belt. They're like, I'm going to put you to the test. You have all these extra stressors now because you are exposed to direct sunlight and wind and cold and animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I, that's what leaps them to purple is if they can weather those storms and yeah. use them. This sunlight's not going to burn my leaves. It's going to grow them. Mm-hmm. This rain is not going to flood us. It's going to nurture us. And Heavens. the purple belt trying to rip my head off, that's a compliment to me. That just means I'm trying to da 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 It's so like, we have to almost let them know, here it comes. Yeah. Now you're blue belt. You have all this, this new exposure that you weren't to before. You're no longer protected by the soil, mm-hmm. you know, at least the visual. So I think that's that's part of the the blues of the blues. Yeah. What's your trick to balancing everything that you have going on between owning two academies, teaching classes, training for yourself? You have your kids. You have your kids doing classes. Uh, you have a a pond and a <laughs> coal plunge in your backyard. <laughs> You're making your own yogurt now. Like, how do you yeah. how do you balance all this? As a school owner, as someone who's doing their own athletic training, to a parent. Um, unlike uh, by saying no. Mm, that's my favorite. Is it? I love saying no. Yeah. No is it really hard to do you, at you, first. You, uh, yes, because here's the thing. Successful people know how to say yes. Very successful people know how to say no. Yeah. You're not going to get anywhere if you don't have the the bravery to say yes to opportunities when they come or yes to yourself I can do this but that only gets you so far until you have the ultimate bravery to say no because every time you say no you have the option of saying yes to other things but every time you say yes you don't have any other options I looked at the what's a phrase out uh, no is a complete sentence but mm. yes is an obligation that's true and so I because of that every time I have a new endeavor a new adventure a new whatever Oh, is your life harder now? Is it harder now? It's actually easier mm-hmm. because if it doesn't fill into my categories of of my life that are important, most important to me, they just yeah, they're just not. I don't feed it, them, so they die. And sometimes no doesn't have to be no. It could be not right now. Yeah, right. It's like a, it's a superpower being able to do that. It is, and it's your, it should be your knee jerk. Yeah, it, it, I think you know. But if if you're if you're if you're twenty though, or twenty one, or, or or even. 70 and you haven't whipped it out yet say yes then say yes to just about everything yeah but as you start getting constricted as as the fronts start to now you gotta pick okay which one you know you gotta explode out you, you have to get something but then, then you gotta start shielding up too what do you look forward to the most from like today onwards right you, you have your you have your two academies you have a ton of students you have your association you have your kids doing jiu-jitsu what are you looking forward to the most in your jiu-jitsu journey, like moving forward? What what really excites you? I, I just, going forward with jiu-jitsu, I just like seeing all, what, what it's done for my life, jiu-jitsu specifically, to see others using jiu-jitsu in different directions, but still using jiu-jitsu and the, and, and the foundational concepts of jiu-jitsu on and off the mat. It inspires me. Like, I want to see, I want to see what art they come up with. Yeah. Literally, or figure two, like I love watching. Again, like I, I always fall back on it for getting through stuff in my life and and just really trying to thrive with, with these concepts. To see other people doing that and having a part of that is so fulfilling. So it's so like like emotionally fulfilling to me. Like it like just it completes it like gives me that like thing that I think a lot of us are missing, and that's a job that you have passion for. Because you have service, it mm-hmm. matters. You matter. Like, and if I can be of any service to any of them, I don't want to give. I can't give up. Yeah, like, you know, like because you make a difference. You get, yes, and it's not in you. It's the jujitsu that you're sharing with. Yes, like you're almost just opening their idea, their brain to. There's more out there. There's other perspectives. There's yeah. There's ways and, that they and they do it to me too. They do it right back. Hundred percent. So like every time you. Inside every black belt is a white belt. Yeah. Every white belt is a black belt to be. Yeah. Right. 
And I just like every time I'm exposed to another person that I may have helped ex- with jujitsu, they're exposing me to some other thing I'm learning from them with. And I tell my students this all the time, but like, yeah, I have this, this thing around anytime I help someone else with their goals, they help me with my own. So the more people I can help, the more help I get in return. If I don't help anyone, then I'm flying solo. That's true. What do they say? If, uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. Yeah. If you want to go far, go together. I like that. Yeah. That's a, you're just like a little book of quotes. I, quotes matter to me. Man. I, think I wake up on the quote, man. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's cheesy and they're cliche, but they're, they're the cliche for a reason. I'm going to hit you up with uh, 10 rapid fire questions. Oh, they might not be super rapid fire, but we'll, we'll close with, with this. Do I have a time limit for each one? Uh, no. Gi or no gi? Right now at this point in time. Uh, I do more gi, but I'm way more into no gi right now. Because mm. it's, it's just because of the consequences. I love it. Yeah. Uh, what are you currently working on in your jiu-jitsu game? For me personally? Yeah. Or for, uh, uh, for, uh, the timer, uh, uh, the best way to describe it is, uh, in a word, I guess I haven't described it in words, like looking at a position that we're in, so the technical position we're in mm-hmm. and how from another angle that might be just one hip switch away from a different position, uh, for like, for example, like. It's like a global perspective we were just talking about. Yeah, zooming, zooming out from the outside and being like, like what's the classic humorous one? Um, in space, the mount is also the guard. Yeah. Almost like that, but with a little bit more complicated positions. I love it. Cool. Uh, favorite submission of the moment? The one they give me. Uh, top person you would love to train with given the opportunity? Alive or dead, doesn't matter. Alive or dead? Um, uh, both of my kids from their black belts. Oh, oh, very cool. Uh, best advice for beginners. Take off the street belt and put on the white belt. If that's where you are in your, in your stage and trust the process. It's it. There's a lot being thrown at you. Listen or don't listen. Just keep coming back. Just keep just twice a week. Make it your goal. Any more, you may burn out. Any less, you may fall out. Trust the process. A lot of this thinking has been done for you. You don't have to be a master of anything. Everybody in that room was you once and just have faith in that. One word to describe your jiu-jitsu style. Fumbling. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was me last night. I bet. I don't. I had those days a little. I would say uh, in progress. Well, that's two words. Evolving. Oh, love it. Uh, what's the toughest aspect of jiu-jitsu to master? We almost talked about it before, or we were kind of talking about it before. I think the toughest part of jiu-jitsu is learning how to turn obstacles into advantages and failures or losses into wins. But it's also the most beautiful thing you get out of it, right? What's one habit that has significantly improved your life? Could be saying no. Saying no is a good one. Most up before the enemy. I, 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 it is the, it's like er, being an early riser. Yes. And it doesn't necessarily be in the morning, but be ready before anything. So it'll be like third shifters, for example. Yeah. Not, I just, for, for me, it works. I need to be up well before my kids are. Yeah. And I know one thing that you always told me in Shih Tzu, you're always the first person off the mat. Like whether you win, you lose, you're the first person to stand up. Oh, oh, yes. I thought it was like off the mat. Like, wait, what do you mean? No, not, not off the mat, but like when you're on the ground and you reset, like you are up before that your opponent then you remember yeah i still try to be yeah like you, that's a if, if if you don't know what that is uh, you know right like okay all right we're all down okay everybody get up try to be the first one up yeah but just, just to up for your own mental resilience what's one habit that has successfully improved significantly improved your jiu-jitsu do you have any habits? passing it on yeah i and i see this too i've watched it even with my, own, my children but even with um white blue purple any belt when they are helping somebody else out with something they need, their jujitsu goes up. And last one, I know you have a lot of these. Favorite book. Favorite book that sucks because that depends on the on, on the audience. Uh, oh, this audience, this audience, uh, which is basically anybody interested in jujitsu, yeah, or doing jujitsu. Oh no! Oh man! 
God, because okay, who's in your top three? So make it easier. Let me tell. Here's what it grabs me. What I return to the most. Okay. His uh, Marcus Aurelius meditations. Everybody knows that one. That's a classic, right? Um, because I just fall. But he's like my ultimate advisor. Even though it's written weird and everything, but meditations. I was. We'll say that. That's a good one to start with. Any of the letters of Seneca that he's writing to his Lucilius. Awesome. Uh, I, I like that the kind of I, old Greek I've and Roman. I've read stuff. meditations specifically, but I've done the, the Daily Stoic, which brings in information from both. Uh, anything by Ryan Holiday, the, the author of that, he, he has good stuff too. And what's nice about him, I, I actually should probably recommend those. Uh, the Obstacle is the Way, how about that? Yeah. Or Ego is the Enemy. He, or he does a good job at breaking down the verbiage. He will make Marcus Aurelius fun. Yeah. He'll make Marcus Aurelius fun again. That'd be a good... Uh, yeah, any, anything by Ryan Holiday, I guess, would be, because he ga- he's a good gateway. And then once you fall in love with all that and you want to go deeper, then you go f- look at uh, Epictetus and Seneca and Chrysippus and Plato. And, yeah. Well, that was it, man. Anything else you'd like to share with the uh, Inside the Wave audience, your students, your jujitsu family, your community? No, just if you're not on the journey, give it a shot. Give it at least four seasons. And I mean four seasons like of a year, four seasons of your jujitsu development, ups and downs. Give it a shot. Stay the course. Trust the process. Pass it on. Yeah. And and just, you're welcome. Well, it's been awesome. I appreciate you. I want to thank you personally for being my coach and helping me on this journey. You know, you didn't bring me in in jiu-jitsu, but you've kept me in it. And you've supported me with everything I've done along the way. Back at you. I've learned so much from you, including this. So thanks for checking in. Thank you, John Freeland. Uh, Subscribe to this, like this, share this. We love you guys. Thank you so much.